Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through an introductory guide to polyhedra. We will start with what a polyhedron is. Polyhedra is the plural form of polyhedron. Then we will move to faces, edges, and vertices. Then we will take a look at nets. And then lastly, we will talk about Euler's formula for polyhedra. Now, simply put, a polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure with flat surfaces, straight edges, and vertices. The surfaces or faces of a polyhedron have to be polygons. This will make a lot more sense as we go through our examples. Let's start with examples of polygons so we understand what those faces have to be. And then we will move to polyhedra. Polyhedra is just the plural form of polyhedron. Here are some examples of polygons. They are plane figures, so two-dimensional or flat. They are closed, and the sides are line segments, so the sides have to be straight. So simply put, they are flat, closed, and straight sides. So we have a triangle, a quadrilateral, more specifically a rectangle, and an octagon. All of those are polygons. Now for some examples that are not polygons. A circle is not a polygon. A circle is curved. It doesn't have straight sides. It's not made of line segments. In the middle, we have an open figure, so that's not a polygon. And then lastly, we have a cube. A cube is three-dimensional. Polygons have to be two-dimensional. They are plane figures, so flat. A cube isn't a polygon, but it is a polyhedron. So let's move over to examples of polyhedra. And that's going to help us better understand what a polyhedron is. Let's start with the cube, which is a 3D figure. And then if we look at all of the surfaces, all of the faces, those faces are all quadrilaterals, more specifically squares. So all of the surfaces or faces are polygons. So 3D and the surfaces or faces are all polygons. So that is a polyhedron. Let's move to the right to the square pyramid. That's a 3D figure and all of the faces are polygons. The base is a square and then the rest of the faces are triangles. So this is a polyhedron as well. And then lastly, we have a hexagonal prism, which is a 3D figure and all of the faces are polygons. Two of the faces are hexagons, and then the rest of the faces are rectangles. So this is an example of a polyhedron as well. Now let's take a look at three examples that are not polyhedra. They are all 3D figures, but the surfaces are not polygons. So a cylinder is not an example of a polyhedron. A cone is not an example, and a sphere is not an example. So there you have it. There's a basic explanation of polyhedra. So what is a polyhedron, or what are polyhedra? Well, 3D figures and all of the surfaces, or faces, have to be polygons. Let's move on to faces, edges, and vertices. Here are our examples for taking a look at faces, edges, and vertices. Now faces are the flat surfaces that make up a solid figure, so a 3D figure. Edges are the line segments that are formed by two faces meeting. And then vertices, which is the plural form of vertex, are the corners or points. Vertices are formed by three or more edges meeting. Let's jump into our examples and see exactly what faces, edges, and vertices look like. We will identify and count the number of faces, edges, and vertices for both of our examples. Let's take a look at number one, where we have a rectangular prism. Let's start by identifying and counting all of the faces. Remember, those are the flat surfaces that make up this rectangular prism we will start with the face up front. So that's one. Then there's a face in the back, that's two. Then we have a face up top, that's three. And then the bottom, that's four. Then we have a face to the left over here, that's five. And then one to the right, that's six. So six total faces. 
Now let's identify and count the number of edges. Those are the line segments created by two faces meeting. For example, this is an edge right here. So let's start here with one edge and go around the top. So one edge, two edges, three edges, four edges. Now let's go around the bottom. Five edges, six edges, seven edges, eight edges. Now for the sides, nine edges, 10 edges, 11 edges, 12 edges. So 12 total edges. And then lastly, let's identify and count the number of vertices. Those are the corners or points created by three or more edges meeting. For example, this is a vertex right here. This is one of the vertices. So let's start here and work our way around. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight total vertices. So for a rectangular prism, there are six faces, 12 edges, and eight vertices. Let's move on to number two and go through another example. For number two, we have a square pyramid. Let's start by identifying and counting the faces. Let's start with the two faces that are up front. So the one to the left is one face, then to the right is two faces. Then we have three faces, so a face to the left in the back, and then a face to the right in the back. So we have four faces going around the pyramid, and then we have the base at the bottom there. So five total faces. Now let's identify and count the edges. Let's start up front here. So this is one edge and work our way around. Two edges, three edges, four edges. Now let's go around the base. Five edges, six edges, seven edges, eight edges. So eight total edges. Now let's identify and count the vertices. We will start with the vertex up top. Now let's go around the base. So we will start over here with two, three, four, and five. So five total vertices. So there's an explanation of faces, edges, and vertices. Let's move on to nets. Now let's take a look at what nets are when it comes to 3D shapes and geometry. Now simply put, a net is the 2D or flat form of a 3D shape. You can think of nets as the unfolded form or laid out flat form of 3D shapes. Nets show all of the surfaces or faces. They are all laid out. Let's go through a few examples so we can see what some different nets look like. Starting with number one, where we have a rectangular prism. So here is the rectangular prism. And then below, we have the net of that rectangular prism. If you can imagine folding that net along the dashed lines, it folds into a rectangular prism. Now I do wanna mention, this is not the only way to lay out a net of a rectangular prism. There can be different possibilities as far as nets for a 3D shape. So something to keep in mind when working with and taking a look at nets. Next, for number two, we have a square pyramid. Below, we have the net of that square pyramid. So imagine folding that net up along those dashed lines and it will fold into the square pyramid. And then lastly, for number three, we have a triangular prism with the net of that triangular prism below. So folding along those dashed lines of the net will give us the triangular prism. So there you have it. There's a basic explanation of nets. Now, nets aren't overly complicated. It's just a matter of knowing what that word means when it comes to 3D shapes and geometry. Let's move on to Euler's formula for polyhedra. Lastly, let's take a look at Euler's formula for polyhedra. 
Now, basically, a mathematician named Leonard Euler figured out that there is a relationship between the number of faces, vertices, and edges of a polyhedron. Simply put, the sum of the number of faces and the number of vertices, so the number of faces plus the number of vertices, is going to be two more than the number of edges. We can write this out as the number of faces plus the number of vertices minus the number of edges equals two. Let's go through a couple of examples and plug in the number of faces, vertices, and edges to show that the equation, this formula, and this relationship is true. Starting with number one, where we have a rectangular prism. We have six faces, 12 edges, and eight vertices. Let's plug those into the formula to verify that they are correct. So the number of faces plus the number of vertices minus the number of edges equals two. So six faces plus eight vertices minus 12 edges equals two. Six plus eight equals 14. And then 14 minus 12 gives us two. So if we take a look at the number of faces and the number of vertices, six plus eight, that gives us 14. That's two more than the number of edges. Let's move on to number two and try another example. We have a square pyramid for number two. So five faces, eight edges, and five vertices. So the number of faces plus the number of vertices minus the number of edges equals two. Five faces plus five vertices minus eight edges equals two. Five plus five is 10 minus eight is two. There are five faces and five vertices. So if we combine those, we get 10, which is two more than eight edges. So there you have it. There's an introductory guide to polyhedra. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.